up over the smokestacks rose a promise of a grand tomorrow. So this is how a meme dies, with thunderous applause. Victoria 3 was announced in May 2021, following Paradox Interactive's disastrous release of the Europa Universalis 4 DLC, Leviathans. Unlike Leviathans, this announcement roused an entirely positive reaction. One year later, and things could not be more different. Victoria 3 has fractured public opinion. On Steam, one week after release, the game has mixed reviews, with almost half of the overall reviews being negative. Critical reviews remain positive while content creators are now calling out other content creators, implying that they have been paid to promote a false image of Victoria 3 on their channels at the behest of Paradox Interactive, in a coordinated campaign to hoodwink the community. Not since the disastrous release of Imperator Rome, a game that Paradox dropped like a bag of hot horse manure, have we seen such a negative response to the release of a grand strategy game. But how did this happen? And has Victoria 3 really failed? To answer these questions, let's start by looking back at the catalyst for this schism, Warfare in Victoria 3. Paradox Interactive have been very keen to give their community a peek behind the curtain. With the developer diaries released each week, they explored various aspects of this game. On November 3rd, 2021, they released the 22nd developer diary, titled The Concept of War. Paradox would be entirely reworking the warfare for Victoria 3, in a way that would make war almost unrecognisable when compared to any of their other products. There was an immediate negative response to this new direction. Welp, there goes my hype for Victoria 3, and meh, I thought this system could be better, but this definitely ruined the game, F for Victoria 3, were among top voted comments on the Paradox Forum. From here, the schism began to spread to YouTube and Reddit. This, the concept of war, is easily the most contentious, the most controversial and the most anticipated dev diary that has ever been released for Victoria 3. Frankly, in my opinion, that has ever been released for any game whatsoever. It is clear that at this point, many avid fans of Victoria 2 were beginning to turn against its successor. However, there were many that supported this change in direction, at least in principle. They questioned whether Paradox would be able to bring about this vision. I think it's a very risky decision. It can work, but it can also destroy the game. But I have to see more before I can decide. This schism would do little but fester in a now divided community for the next five months, until the unthinkable would happen. In April 2022, a full six months before the release of Victoria 3, an early beta build was leaked online. First, just as a video of gameplay, but then, as calls grew for the game to be shared, a downloadable version of the beta was circulated from a 4chan board. Almost one week later, the game director for Victoria 3 made a forum post regarding the leak. He urged the community not to base their opinions of Victoria 3 on this unfinished and unpolished version of the game. Once the game has reached a state where we could really benefit from and respond to your feedback, we'll be eager to be able to properly show it to you. Morale in the Victoria 3 developer team was reportedly very low. There were many that had seen and even played the leak beta, and then gone on to make their opinions known. Central to these discussions was Warfare. Sweet, looking forward to seeing how Warfare and Trade will be addressed. Yet, even in the midst of this disaster, many people shared their support for the developer team and continued support for the Victoria 3 project. At this time, it was still unclear whether they were in the majority within the community or whether those with negative opinions of the game were in fact the larger cohort. As the release date moved ever closer, Paradox began to fully showcase the game by streaming gameplay on YouTube and Twitch. This did little to alleviate the concerns of the community surrounding warfare and other aspects of the game 
in the wake of the leak. Confidence in Victoria 3 remained high at Paradox and, in an unexpected move by the studio, the limited number of attendees to PDXCon in September 2022 were given access to Victoria 3, almost two full months before the scheduled release date. Amongst this hardcore cadre of Paradox enthusiasts, Victoria 3 was received in an expectedly positive light. Content creators that attended PDXCon were unable to record footage from the event, but did release their opinions on the systems. Fresh concerns about UI accessibility were raised, though warfare seemed to be only a minor topic for these creators. Then, shortly before the October 25th release, content creators published Victoria 3 videos sponsored by Paradox Interactive. Normally, this would be an uncontroversial part of Paradox's release cycle. I myself have participated in a single campaign similar to this for the Stellaris Toxoids DLC release, which came out in September 2022. However, with the schism in the community now reaching a boiling point, there were many that reacted very negatively to these videos. Some implied that these creators had been bought by Paradox to publish falsely positive videos showcasing this new game. Even other content creators joined this chorus, pointing fingers at those in the creator space around them. But the community would not have to wait long before they would find out for themselves if these content creators were corrupt and if Victoria 3 would really live up to the hype. It is now clear that a large number of the people with criticisms of Victoria 3 were part of the player base for the previous installment, Victoria 2. Unflattering comparisons were being made between the now dated Victoria 2 and its successor, with the conclusion that Victoria 3 had failed to live up to its predecessor. Chief amongst these complaints, as you may have guessed, was the war system. These Victoria 2 fans felt that they were ignored by Paradox. Unfortunately, the fact is that we were not listened to at all if Paradox even knew we existed. They didn't really acknowledge or listen to us about this. And this lies at the heart of the issue that many Victoria 2 players have with this game. They had their own preconceived ideas about what this game would be, and they feel that Paradox has not tailored Victoria 3 to their smaller niche community. From a technical standpoint, Victoria 3 released without any issue. People across the world began to play the game, most for the first time. And after playing, they began to leave reviews. Within 24 hours, the reviews on Steam changed from mainly positive to mixed. The comment sections of Victoria 3 videos began to fill with negative comments aimed squarely at the game. Best way to play, go to the pause menu, click on quit to desktop and then launch Victoria 2. With all of this criticism, it would be reasonable to question, has Victoria 3 been a success? Commercially at least, the answer does seem to be yes. According to Steam Charts, which tracks the concurrent player base of any game on Steam, within the first 24 hours of release, Victoria 3 had achieved a concurrent user peak of 69,663. To put this number into context, Hearts of Iron 4 has only ever achieved a user peak of 70,836 since its release in 2016. Another Paradox title, Stellaris, has peaked at 68,517 concurrent users, Europa Universalis 4 at 47,844, and Crusader Kings 3 at 98,474 during its release in 2020. This places Victoria 3 firmly in the middle of the pack when we compare it to other grand strategy titles released by Paradox. When comparing it to Victoria 2, it has dwarfed its predecessor, a game that has achieved a peak concurrent players on Steam of 3,367. That is over 20 times lower than Victoria 3. What the general trajectory for this game will be, only time can tell. But for now, it is on course to be one of the most successful games in Paradox Interactive's history. But what about the game that we are seeing Victoria 3 get compared to over 
and over again, the dreaded Imperator Rome. While Imperator Rome, which no longer receives any love or attention from Paradox, peaked at only 29,077 users. So, even if the comparison based on Steam reviews is valid, Victoria 3 has already been a much, much more successful title for Paradox Interactive. And speaking of those reviews, let's break down what we are seeing on Steam. I would say that the reviews fall into one of five categories. Totally positive, positive but recognizing the issues, negative but recognizing the Paradox business model, totally negative, and lastly, and most interestingly, predetermined negative. You see, Victoria 3 may share a title, time period, and some of the same internal names with its predecessor Victoria 2, but at its heart, Victoria 3 does not feel like a direct successor. This is an economic simulator with a different abstraction of warfare to Victoria 2. Many like and praise the game for what it is. There are those that believe the game is unfinished. And given Paradox's business model of releasing a title and then supporting it for years with further development, free updates and paid DLC, this makes sense. When Victoria 3 is compared to a game with a host of DLC attached and many years of additional work, it definitely looks rather unfinished. However, these critics are not the ones with the loudest voices. The loudest and somewhat questionable voices are those that appear to have decided that they did not like Victoria 3 before they have really played the game. In many cases, this is evidenced by their continued play after leaving a starkly negative review. Reviewed at 1.5 hours, Victoria 3 has very little replayability and an embarrassing lack of flavor. Yet they have continued to play the game and at only 91 hours after release spent almost 50 hours playing. That constitutes almost 80% of their waking hours since the release playing this game. The doubt in these reviews comes from the fact that if the game is so bad, why are they still playing it? Or in this case, spending 80% of their conscious time in game. It seems more likely that these reviews have been rendered too soon and are based on preformed opinions of the game. This pattern is repeated over and over. Many reviewers having left their negative review that you should not play Victoria 3, then went on to ignore their own advice and play quite a lot more Victoria 3. My heart goes out to Mio here, who I must assume is trapped in a living hell. This game was fun for the first two hours, but 91 hours after release, Mio has played over 60 hours. A living hell indeed. This phenomenon has become so widespread that even content creators are now talking about it. Isora Productions declined to create a Victoria 3 video sponsored by Paradox Interactive and has been held up by some as proof that Victoria 3 is a bad game after releasing a video titled Victoria 3 is Stinky. He did then go on to Twitter to set the record straight to some degree, as he later commented, Gotta enjoy the people review dumping Vicky 3 for no war at 20 minutes playtime and coming back the next day and seeing them at 20 hours. It's your right as a consumer to be unhappy with a product that doesn't meet expectations. But if you also can see the base game and its issues have potential to be fixed, valid criticism and not just blindly attacking the developers is a much healthier approach. If the issues you see from other people who have played the game and genuine reviews have turned you off, then hold off on getting the game until they're fixed. Or if they aren't, play Vicky 2. It's also stanky. Overall, it appears that this cohort that played Victoria 2 are at the heart of the schism in public opinion, and they feel deeply let down by Paradox Interactive. They feel they have not been presented with what they wanted, which was Victoria 2 Part 2. Many began forming these opinions on Victoria 3 long before they were able to actually play the game for themselves. They have then celebrated as Victoria 3 slipped from mostly positive in review to mixed. And the question we have to ask is why? What are they trying to achieve? 
Do they just want to stick it to Paradox for not giving them the game that they wanted? Do they want Victoria 3 to fail so that Paradox will never make another Victoria game again, like Imperator Rome? Well, whatever their intentions, it looks like Victoria 3 will continue to be a game that you can buy on Steam for a long, long time to come.